Hey guys, welcome back to the channel here. Um, I wanted to give you an update on what I'm doing for my bait tank this year. Uh, last year I made a video on how I store my bait for ice fishing and I uh, got quite a few views and a lot of questions. Um, and here's the actual tank right here. So you've see, probably seen this video if you've been on my channel long enough. Um, it'll be linked uh, right up here if you want to look at that and also in the uh, end cards if you want to see that video again. So this year I'm doing something a little bit different. Um, that tank worked last year, it worked fairly well, but uh, the one problem I had was that I keep my bait in my basement. And my basement is basically heated, the furnace is down here and uh, it doesn't get really below 65-ish down here so um, the water quality kind of suffers um, with the warmer temperatures and the bait can get shock when I do water changes and when I put it into a bucket and bring it to the lake just the, the rate that the water cools when it's freezing out it just it'll kill some of them so um, I'm hoping that and with that, I had to do I had to do a few water changes with that. I keep this going for a few months, so I'm hoping it, I'm hoping with this system here that I'm going to be doing this year, I'm not going to have to do any water changes, maybe one. So this is what I got so far, and I'll give you more of an update on it as I go. But I'm using a 7.5 cubic foot uh, chest freezer, and my plan is. I'm going to put my bait in here. Uh, it's got a little adjuster down here to set the temperature of what you want it at. Um, I've got a little temperature probe that I'm going to stick in there so I can monitor the temperature. This is my idea. I've taken the cover off because I don't want to ruin, I didn't want to drill holes through this cover and ruin it. The, so if I ever want to use this as an actual chest freezer, I can just put the cover back on. So I built my own cover. Um, it's got uh, it's just got some styrofoam on there that I cut to fit. Um, Use some uh, adhesive and glued it right to the plywood so it fits. And this this part is basically stationary. It'll stay right on there. It's built the same way. But uh, I wanted to use the same filter that I'd used last year because it actually worked really well. So this is going to be outside of the tank and I assume this is where a lot of the heat is going to come from because the water has to go out into this bucket and then back down through into the tank so it'll, it'll warm up a little bit when it goes through this and when it gets pumped through the pump down here. The cover will sit on like that. The, the freezer will actually be running so it's going to keep the water cold. And I've talked to other people that have done this and it seems to work really well. Um, this tank, it worked good. It would work a lot better if I kept it out in the garage where it was cooler and just put like a little heater in there to keep it from icing up. It, that would be perfect and I wouldn't have to do anything. But I didn't want to keep it out in the garage because if I left for a weekend or something and it froze up and burnt the pump out or something, I just don't want any problems with it. So I like it in my basement. So my idea is I drilled some holes here. I'm going to reuse my filter. And this is just a gravity style filter. Um, and I've drilled a couple holes in here to run these pipes through. And I'm just going to, when I, when I get it all running the way I want it to run, I'm going to take some of this and spray it in these to seal that up. There's some seams along here and a drain down there. So I'm going to have to fill those in. I was going to use silicone that's made for fish tanks so it would be fish safe and everything but uh, I don't, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna use this. This, is, this stuff's pretty rugged. 100% um, silicone and I'm just gonna run it all along these seams. There's not many of them. Here, here and down along the bottom and I'll probably just fill in that drain port there and on the outside and it should be alright. So I've got a pond pump down here um, I'll link all this stuff in the description. I got a pond pump. It's a it's actually adjustable, but I've used a couple different kinds before uh, Three to five hundred gallon per hour pump is all you need pond pump. I've rigged up um, PVC to it so the water pumps all the way up through here Into the bucket and When it comes into the bucket, there's a spray bar 
with holes on it and it just sprays it all it disperses it all along the top of this bucket in the bottom I have scrubbies they just go to the dollar store buy a couple bags of dish scrubbies and that's all you're gonna need the sacks has a little bio filter in the bottom uh, it has they have a lot of surface area a lot of uh, places where the bacteria to build up and uh, give it the necessary bacteria that it needs so I've just used this is just for sewing it's just polyfill from a sewing store and I cut a hole in the middle of it so that goes over the top of those and this is the finest filter that I have and so I put it last and then on top of that I put a coarse filter which is about my medium medium filter that goes on top of that and then I have my the coarsest filter that I have it goes on top of that. And then I run my drain pipe down through here. So let's just do that real quick. Okay, so that's what that looks like. I've run the, um, got the filters in that order. This pipe right here goes down all the way to the bottom of the bucket. It's about an inch, half an inch off the bottom of the bucket into the scrubbies. Let's put this spray bar on. So, and I also, just for added added filtration, I usually will stick another one of these without a hole. I'll just stick it right underneath on top of here, just to catch any of the really large stuff. That just sits there. So, the water pumps out of the tank into here, sprays out, gets filtered through all of this stuff. This catches the, the bait, the majority of the stuff. So usually I'll take this out every once in a while and shake it out outside, blow it out with an air compressor or something. So the water sprays and it's forced through all of these filters because the drain is way down here in the bottom in this pipe. So everything goes through, it comes back up this pipe out here and back down into the tank. We're having it at a 45 degree angle. It'll shoot out and uh, give a little bit of a swirl, a little bit of current in here for the fish to kind of hang out in. All right guys, so here we are two weeks later. Uh, I got the tank running. It's in full operation now. I've got about eight or nine dozen shiners in there. My filter's all hooked up. This weird looking pipe right here is just an overflow. I just have it going down to the ground. If it ever, if this ever overflows for some reason, which it shouldn't, but it may once or twice a year, it'll just come out here and go onto the floor, which I'm not too worried about, just a cement floor. But one thing I have noticed, and I figured this was gonna happen, is this sweat's pretty bad. Um, because the water is so cold in here, it's, 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 uh, let's see what the temperature is. 31.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, my basement's in the low 60s, so that's going to sweat quite a bit. The pipes are sweating, you can see. So, I mean, I've got a glass table into here. It's not really affecting much. Um, so let's take the cap off this. Check out the filter. I showed you guys the filter earlier in the video. It's running now. That's just the overflow pipe there. Kept this part stationary so this stays on here at all times. And I ran my the discharge pipe through here. And the infeed comes up through here. And I just spray foamed both of these. And then I also spray foam the hole where the power cord and the aerator hose goes in. And also where the wire for the thermometer goes in. And it seems to work really well. So let's pop this baby open. Take a look. So the styrofoam rests right on this flat part right along here. You can see how that fits. So and then I just got an aerator down here, just like a you can just use a little aeration stone from a fish tank. But let me turn this off real quick. So you can see I've got once that filter dumps out. I've got about uh, eight dozen in here right now maybe a little bit less so that top is working perfectly and my freezer isn't even running the whole time i have this down here i have it set on number three which is one of the lower settings and i've actually hooked the freezer up to a timer right here so it's on for um you know three to four hours a day and then it shuts off for quite a while and then it's on for you know, another five hours or so, and then it shuts off. And that way, um, it's not constantly running, which I don't know if it would anyways. I really want this around low 30s, and it's perfect right where it is. But 
at that time or just makes it so the freezer runs for a while, shuts off, runs for a while, shuts off, and so it doesn't get hot and uh, burn out this motor or anything. It gives it a break, gives it time to cool down, and it doesn't seem to be affecting the temperature at all. This has stayed right in the low 30s. I think it holds probably around 50 gallons completely full so I probably got about I don't know 40 in there or 45 gallons it's fairly full seems to be working great if you have any questions let me know thanks for watching if you like this video give it a thumbs up and make sure to click the subscribe button for more fishing videos thanks guys and we'll see you later